if the price of something goes down, we buy more of it. This is due to two different effects, the income effect and the substitution effect. The income effect occurs because the good is less expensive, which we will perceive as having an increase in purchasing power since it will mean a smaller drain on our personal finances. The substitution effect occurs because it offers more utility per unit of money and thus other alternatives become less attractive. What Eugene Slutsky managed to do was find an equation that decomposes this effect based on Hicksian and Marshallian demand curves. Mathematically, it is based on the derivatives of Marshallian and Hicksian demands. The green circles correspond to Marshallian demands, while the red circle corresponds to Hicksian demand. The left-hand side of the equation is the total effect, that is, the derivative of quantity with respect to price. It shows us how much the total quantity of a good that we consume varies when the price changes. The next part is the substitution effect, which is how much the variation is due to us finding similar options. This effect is obtained from the derivative of the Hicksian demand with respect to price. The right-hand side is the income effect, or in other words, how much changes in our purchasing power affect the amount we consume of a certain good. It is the derivative of the Marshallian demand with respect to income and multiplied by the Marshallian demand. This equation can also be understood graphically following John Richard Hicks' decomposition. The x-axis, or horizontal axis, shows the amount of good x1 consumed, while the y-axis, or vertical axis, shows the amount of x2 consumed. Every consumer will have different indifference curves that represent bundles of goods that give them the same level of satisfaction or utility, and a budget constraint that limits their consumption. Given the current budget restriction, an individual maximize their utility at the point where the restriction line is tangent to the indifference curve. This is denoted as point A, being this point, the initial equilibrium. Now let's say the price for good x1 decreases. This will consequently mean that the restriction line changes since the consumer can now consume more of good x1. And as a result, a higher indifference curve can be reached, offering more utility for the consumer. Again, utility will be maximized where the restriction line is tangent to the utility curve, which occurs at point B, this point being the final equilibrium. The total effect in the increase in welfare is determined by the horizontal distance between point A and point B. Using what is known as the Hicksian demand, we will adjust the monetary restriction with the objective to recover the initial level of utility. This is done in order to understand how, the prices being in the same proportion as in the final state, hence the red parallel restriction line, we would have chosen the amount of goods x1 and x2 consumed. It must be noted that this reduction of the monetary restriction does not actually happen, but is used to differentiate the substitution from the income effect. Point C would have been our equilibrium in this scenario, since it maximizes the consumer's utility. We can now see more clearly the different increases in welfare the substitution effect and the income effect, as a result in the decrease in the price of good x1. Now we will analyze the individual and aggregate effects of an increase in the price for different types of goods. For that, we'll analyze what happens when the price of a certain good x increases, separating the substitution effect from the income effect. When dealing with normal goods, an increase in its price will have a negative effect on both the substitution and income effect, and hence the total effect in welfare will also be negative. This is the exact opposite effect to the one analyzed before. For inferior goods, the substitution effect will be negative while having a positive income effect. Therefore, an analysis for this type of goods may be a little tricky, since the total effect will depend on which effect has a bigger absolute value. In those cases where the absolute value of the substitution effect is greater, this is, when the negative effect more than offsets the positive effect, the total effect will be negative. In those inferior goods where the absolute value for the income effect is higher than the absolute value of the substitution effect, the total effect will be positive. This type of inferior goods is known as Giffen goods. The last option that can occur is that both absolute values are equal. In this case, the total effect will remain constant, and there won't be any changes in consumers' welfare. Lastly, for independent goods, the total effect will always be negative, 
This occurs because the substitution effect will invariably be negative, while there will be no income effect. On the one hand, being able to differentiate the substitution effect from the income effect can help us understand how consumers value different goods, and how much of their income they are willing to spend on those goods. On the other hand, Marshallian and Hicksian demands can help us determine the exact amount of an increase or decrease on any consumer's welfare.